Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be showing you how to make an awesome flat panel. Now, what's really cool about this is not only is it very effective, but it's also extremely cheap as well, and you can make one for a large Schmidt cast grain telescope or a little refractor as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now before I get going on how to make these, I always believe in giving credit where credit's due. And in this case, I have to give credit to my wife. Now she's a little camera shy and she didn't want to appear on camera today, which is fine, I get it. But she had this great idea of using stitchery loops as flat panels. So where this idea originated is my sister is a really good cross stitcher. She's great at stitchery as well. And for our anniversary, she made us this. We both like owls, and so she thought it'd be fun to put this together for us. And we, we love it. We put it up on our shelf in our room. And one day, I was actually taking flats outside with a white t-shirt, and I was pulling it over the optical tube. And my wife looked out the window and saw me doing this, and I was like, man, that kind of looks like a pain. And just as she was doing that, she looked up at the shelf, and she saw this and thought, Oh wow, that would be a much better way of doing this. So that's kind of the backstory behind this method. We're definitely calling it the Astro Blender Wife method of flats. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will show you how to put these together and uh, we'll get go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and start things off today by discussing what you're going to need to make these flat panels. So the first thing you'll need is a threaded loop. Now basically what this is, is it's a wooden inner ring and a wooden outer ring that is threaded. So it's pretty, pretty simple. But the best part about these is not only are they lightweight, but they're extremely cheap. So if you look at the price, a four inch loop is $1.59. So in astronomy terms, that's basically free. Now I'm going to be demonstrating how to make one of these on my Red Cat 51 today, but I've also made one of these for all of my telescopes. So the best part is, as you increase in size, this one is 10 inches and only $2.19. So as you increase in size, you don't see that exponential increase in price like you do in astronomy. So whether you want to make these for a big Schmidt Cassegrain or a small little refractor, the price should be about the same. Now, where do you find these? Well, you can find them really at about any craft store, so Hobby Lobby or Michaels, things like that, and they should carry a variety of sizes. So again, whether you want to make one for a big scope or a small scope, you should be able to find one. Now make sure that when you buy one of these rings, that you're not basing the size of the ring on the aperture of the telescope. So for example, a eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain, you might be tempted by an eight inch ring, but the outer cell is actually larger than that. So what I would make sure to do is to measure the outer cell diameter and buy the size just up from that. So anyway, this is what you're going to need to, to start the process. Now the next thing you'll need is some good old plain white tees. Now, we didn't bother buying adult sizes because frankly that was a waste of money. Um, we just got a size 4T, so really small ones, but these worked for me for my nine and a quarter inch Edge HD, which is a pretty big scope. And then you can use these for your smaller refractors as well. So you'll definitely uh, want a plain white t-shirt, or if you're gonna make several of these, buy a few of them. The next thing that you'll need is an iron and an ironing board. Now this is really gonna help you get the wrinkles and creases out of those shirts so you can make the best flat panel possible. And the last thing that you'll need is a good pair of scissors. And then I'll make one other recommendation. This is optional, but some pretty non-abrasive sandpaper, something maybe 400 grit or so. And I just use this to clean up the rings so I don't ever get any slivers or anything like that on my corrector plate or on my lenses. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just measure the outer dew shield diameter on my Red Cap 51. And you can see it's just slightly bigger than three inches. So I'm gonna go one step above for my ring size and get four inches. And that's what I've done. So the four inch works really nicely on the Red Cat 51. Now, if you look closely, you will see that both my inner and outer ring have some splinters on them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a light sanding. Nothing crazy, just to, to take those off. And these splinters actually won't appear in your images at all because the t-shirt sits in between them. I just wanna make sure I don't get any splinters or anything like that on my corrector plate or my lens. So anyway, just a light sanding is all that I do. The next step is to iron the t-shirts. Now this is definitely the most important step in the entire process. You really want to make sure you don't have any creases or any wrinkles that could ruin a flat frame. So in that area that you're going to be using, just make sure you iron it really well. You know, obviously don't burn yourself. It's ironing. It's, it's pretty easy, but take your time with this and make sure that you get it right because this is definitely, like I said, the most important step. The other thing is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do this to both sides. 
we're going to be using both sides in the flat panel. So again, just take your time and, and make sure that you have a nice flat surface here that's free of wrinkles and free of creases. Okay, so I've got my iron unplugged and out of the way so I don't burn myself or anything like that. And then basically you just want to unthread the ring almost as far as it will go. That way you have a lot of play in here. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the t-shirt now that it's iron and nice and crisp and I'm just gonna lay it over the top of the inner ring right here. So I'm just gonna take this off the ironing board, drag it right over the top, find a good place where I want it. That looks pretty good right there. And I'm gonna take this outer ring, stretch it apart, and slip it over the top, and then make sure everything is nice and tight. Basically as tight as I can get it. Should have some spring there, okay? So just get this nice and tight, and then make sure it's all flush, okay? And then start threading it back together and get that Nice and tight. Now in this step, it is also nice to have two people so someone can keep it stretched while you tighten it. But for the smaller ones like this, um, I can do this on my own, so. Okay, just about good there. Now before you actually cut this off, you want to make sure you have it where you want it because once you cut it, you're gonna lose that leverage. So make sure you really have everything the way you want it. Uh, flip it to the other side. This is the real important part. This is what your telescope's gonna be seeing. Do you see any creases, bumps, or anything like that in here? And if you don't, then you're good to go. And you can just go ahead and, and cut this off right here. Okay, so I'm just doing an initial cut here. I can clean this up and make it look nicer later if I want to. Okay, so there we have it. There is the, uh, the flat panel, uh, extremely lightweight, costs under $10 to make, uh, probably honestly under $5 to make this. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and clean up these edges here and it's, it's ready to go. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and finished cutting off the excess t-shirt and cleaning this up, I'm ready to test it. And from here, you'll actually see how good this fits. So remember that there's some springiness in here. Well, when you put it on the, the telescope, the weight of the telescope is actually gonna push up on it and make it even tighter. So this is going to produce an even better flat field image. So not only is this system really cheap and easy to make, but it's also extremely effective. Now t-shirt flats are best taken when the sky is relatively neutral, so dawn or early evening is when you should be aiming for. Now that being said, remember flat frames you want to have at the same focus point of your light frames or close to it, and that if you're using filters you need to take a set of flats for each filter. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and drop this on here and we'll, we'll take these flats. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and begin the flat test by clicking on my auto run tab and then selecting the flat panel. Now you'll see the exposure is set to auto and there's several different exposures you can pick from, but the auto setting is what I'm going with because it works really well. So I'm just gonna hit okay and then go back to the main screen and tap on the start button. Now you'll notice at the bottom right, it calculates the exposure, which is really handy for CCD and CMOS style cameras. Um, and then at the top right, those flats are just taking in rapid succession here. Image is loading and we'll see the histogram and you'll see that those are very well exposed. So the auto function does a really good job, the flats look good, and these flat panels work as they should.
Mm. All right, everyone. Well, that is the Astro Blender wife method of creating a flat panel. And as you can see, it's extremely simple. You can probably make one of these in about 10 minutes for under $10 and they work really well. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, have a great day and clear skies.